It's time to welcome the wine ladies. With Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi, everybody. It's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome, everyone, to the show. We are live today on thatchannel.com. And also a very big welcome to our listeners on the Jewel Radio, Radio Network, the FM dial, 88.5 in Toronto, 98.5 in Ottawa, 107.7 in Hawkesbury. Welcome, everyone, to The Wine Ladies. And thanks to all of our friends and fans on Facebook and thewineladies.com. Thank you for all the questions and comments that you're sending in. Now, I would like to wish some very special birthday wishes to Canada, to all the Canadians out there, our 143rd birthday. Happy birthday, Canada. That's right, 143 years. We're looking mighty fine, and that's our birthday <laughs> tomorrow. And uh, so let's raise our glasses, Georgia. We always like to cheer, cheer our listeners and viewers. So cheers. Happy birthday, Look. Canada. Cheers, everyone. Happy birthday. And in our supersized glasses here today, we are cheering in honor of our birthday of Canada, the Sandbanks Riesling VQA 2008. Lots of citrus on the nose, as I recall, and a wonderful body, too. So cheers with Sandbanks Riesling VQA. All right, well, on with today's show, and I'm very much excited today because today's show is all about that wonderful country way down under, Australia. And on the show today, we have the iconic wine, Wolf Blast Winery is with us, and, one, and the wonderful winemaker himself with a charming Aussie accent, which is one of the best accents in the world. We have Chris Hatcher, who is the chief winemaker who is here in studio all the way from Australia. Welcome, Chris, to Canada and Toronto. Thank you, Suzanne. It's great to be here. Great to be with the wine ladies, and I guess I should say good day from Oz. Good day, <laughs> good day. <laughs> Love that accent. I got well, to say. Well, actually, I'm the only one here that hasn't got an accent. You guys have got the <laughs> accents. Do. We have an accent. <laughs> you got the accents, not me. Oh, okay. I guess we might. Now, also joining us with another with an accent, I guess as well, we have David Wilson. David is the executive chef for Mixed Grill of O'Connor Catering, located in Oakville, Ontario, and David has brought in. Some some amazing, delicious food items to share with these wonderful Wolf Blast wines. David, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thanks. Glad to have you. Oh, thanks. everything looks thanks. incredible. He's yep. been cooking Good. up a storm here and offering yes. all kinds of goodies we before we even get started. Yet till, uh, after the show, I'm sure you'll snack down on them. Though, so. <laughs> Absolutely. And Hopefully. was it difficult for everybody to get here with the G20 going on and everything, or? No, uh, not too just bad. A li just a little, but uh, yeah, no, it was fine. But you're here. Yeah. That's great. Aussies go everywhere. <laughs> Aussies go everywhere. Yeah, I know. That's what we hear. You're very yeah. easygoing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, what an honor to have you here, Chris. We're really looking forward to learn a little bit more about Wolf Blast Wines, about, about yourself, and a little bit more about the Australian wine industry and what's going on there, what the future is. It's going to be a great show. Good. Excellent. And now, Dave, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, the, the Aussies have done an incredible job at marketing Australian wines all over the world. What do you think the success has been uh, attributed to? Uh, look, I think Australian wine is very similar to Australian. It's pretty easy going, pretty laid back, and what you get is what you see. So the wine quality is there and uh, very much reflects our personalities. They do. I, the Australian wines, I don't know, the last 10 or 15 years, they've just, they've just taken the world by storm. And I'm just wondering, uh, I know that you're, one of the things that you like to focus on is now moving into the regionality of Australia as opposed to just one big continent of wines. There's different regions that, that have different um, uh, terroirs, etc. Absolutely. Australia is a very, very, very large country. I mean, pe people think uh, you know, it's way down there, down under, but uh, <laughs> in actual fact, it's very large. It's probably land mass is about the same size as Canada. So mm -hmm. if you really look at regionality, it's enormous differences. So you've got from Margaret River right through to uh, the Hunter Valley. So you've got an incredible variety of regions. Absolutely. And we, we certainly, in Wolf Blast, uh, concentrate on regionality and some of our wines and a uh, really important part of where Australia's going. Absolutely. Now, you've, you, we've brought in, what, we've got five wines to sample well, we here. We thought we'd go easy today. Yes, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> and David, you brought in uh, three magnificent dishes yep, to pair it. up with these wines. Yep, Maybe we can get a rundown of what wines we're going to taste and what the foods are and sort of go from there. Okay, well, what we'd 
been doing as far as the wine, something that's really important in Australia is Riesling. Mm -hmm. So a dry Riesling, not sweet, but very dry. Chardonnay, so follow that up with a Chardonnay. Now, most people think of Aussie Chardonnay, big oaky, buttery, yes. heavy Chardonnay, but in actual fact, uh, Chardonnay's changed a lot and you'll see it uh, in the wines, much more balanced and, and really great with food. And then we go on to our premium red. So we've got uh, our uh, yellow label Cabernet, followed by the uh, uh, grey label, and then our very premium wine, our black label. Now, I'm just going to move this yeah, glass because it's a little bit in, in Chris's face. So. Oh, oh, okay. That's no good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thanks for catching that, Suzanne. Yeah. And then for the food, David, what have for you prepared? For the food, we uh, paired the yellow Riesling with the uh, poached jumbo shrimp you see there. Mm. And then for the uh, Cabernet, the yellow label, we were going to, with our chicken slider sliders with a barbecue sauce and potato salad okay and then for the gray or the black you could pair some sort of uh, beef or a dark uh, protein Sounds of right. some sort we're gonna do uh, a lamb chop today that I'm gonna saute up with the couscous Wow. So as well, so yeah. put that, in uh, that's amazing. Glass. I'm glad we didn't eat anything before the show, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We didn't but drink anything either, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Good thinking on our part. Yes. <laughs> okay, so if we want to get right into it, maybe we can talk a little bit about the Riesling. Sure. Because I know that Wolf Blass has been working, I mean, is, is credited for a lot of advances with Riesling. For about 40 years, you guys have been concentrating on Riesling. Absolutely. In fact, if you look at the history of Australian wine, most people think uh, wine's only new to Australia, but in actual fact uh, our industry started in the 1840s, so we've been going for some time. Yes. And it was basically settled by Germans, so German migrants came to particularly South Australia in, in, uh, in Australia, and of course Germans, Riesling, mm -hmm. go course, together, so yeah, what that. else were they going to do <laughs> but grow Riesling? So right. their first, first wines were around Riesling, and when, when Wolf the Man came to Australia in, uh, in the 1960s, obviously he had a background in Riesling, so it's a very important part. Tremendous resources in Riesling in Australia, but make a quite unique style in that it's very dry, mm -hmm. so it really suits uh, seafood. Right. Uh, I think it's a, one of the really great combinations for Australian Riesling is that, that dry, crisp, fresh, light, lively wine that really does suit uh, fantastic seafood. The interesting thing about that, Chris, is I think that um, not a lot of people out there naturally equate Riesling with Australia. Yeah, it's all about Shiraz normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, well... And Shards um, too, I, I mean, guess, for the whites. We're not all living in the outback either. No. <laughs> people seem to think that, that Aussies, all we do is live out in the outback and eat kangaroos, but... Uh, <laughs> So everybody thinks we live in Eagles. Yeah, no, no, that's true, David. Well said. Yeah. 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 Do so there are, there are some variety, you know, different things that people don't know about Australia. And, right. and Riesling is one of the real gems of Australia. And people think of Australia as a really hot climate. Yes. And it is hot, there's mm -hmm. no question. But all of Australia is not hot. So uh, the regions where we grow Riesling and premium Chardonnay is in the cooler regions. So either closer to the coast or up in the, in the mountains or probably compared to your mountains, little hills, but uh, <laughs> our small hills. But obviously you get cool climate from that and really right. suits the Riesling grape, so it's a uh, fantastic. All right, well, we're going to okay, go awesome. to our first break. You're watching The Wine Ladies here on thatchannel.com. For a complete podcast, go to thatchannel.com slash thewineladies and also, of course, to our listeners on the Jewel FM network. Keep listening. More to come. We've got here today the show uh, Down Under with Australia's iconic Wolf Blast Wines with the chief winemaker himself, Chris Hatcher. And of course, Dave Wilson is here from Mixed Grill of O'Connor Catering. So lots more to come. Do not, and I say do not go away. We'll be right back. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls Night Out, we brought Girls Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls Night Out Wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com.